Welcome to AJA Lunchtime Live. I'm Kimberly Carroll. I am the AJA Director, um, and welcome to all you fine souls here with us live. Welcome to those of you who are watching the replay. Um, our replays are getting a lot of watches, so that's wonderful, and so we're happy to ha have you join us however you can. Today, our topic is animal activists on trial, and we have with us Amy Serrano, Roy Sassano and Nick Schaefer of the Excelsior Four joining us. So um, Kirsten, I'm gonna have you spotlight us and I'm gonna give you just a little bit of background on these three. Um, so Nick, Amy and Roy um, are part of a group along with um, uh, Jeff Regeer um, and they're known as the Excelsior Four. And in two weeks, these three folks here are going to trial and facing years in prison for exposing horrific animal cruelty at Excelsior Hog Farm in BC. There have been so many twists and turns in this case, including the charges against Jeff being dropped today. He's, 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 he's running to do his next thing. Um, uh, but we have these three here who in like two weeks, I think July, July or sorry, June 27th, is it folks? Um, the trial starts, it's going to be a jury trial. And um, man, I'm just going to say shit's going down. So uh, welcome, Amy, Nick, Roy, welcome, guys. It's so good to have you here. Thank Hello. you. Thank, Thank you. you for having Hello. us. Thank you Aww. so much. I know things are so busy right now. You've got so much to think about. So I'm, I'm really thankful that you came to join our community um, so that we can find ways to help and support and, and really um, get the word out there in an educated way about what's happening with this case. So um, folks uh, that are joining us, um, we are open to questions. Um, I'm gonna ask them some questions just to lay the groundwork and, and give folks the basic information. But if you have a question um, in the chat, just put uh, star star and we will do our best to get to as many questions as possible today. So, um, okay, first of all, so many moving pieces to the Excelsior 4 story. Um, Peter released a hidden camera investigation. Then Amy and Nick, you led the big meet the victims action a few days later. And then much later, you all got charged, but not for the meet the victims action. Please start this chain of events out for us. Uh, Roy, I, I understand you're the logistics expert. Can you, can you walk us through this? Oh, Jesus, so much like in the beginning, you know. Um, so we'll go back to, I guess, April 23rd, 2019. At uh, that point, an anonymous whistleblower released a bunch of footage from inside Excelsior Hog Farm and was picked up by PETA and CTV, became a huge news story. Uh, you might recall, um, there are a lot of, lot of like, pigs crammed into these filthy pens. A lot of them have these growths and injuries. Um, and there is a dead pig uh, being eaten by other live pigs in one of these pens. Um, uh, and so, yeah, this is, <laughs> pretty pretty uh, big news story there. Um, April 28th um, was Meet the Victims. So uh, the three of us uh, were onto the property and getting to the barns to live stream some stuff and get media in, which happened. Uh, media actually got to eventually uh, do a, a very carefully guided tour. Um, uh, but th that also just continued this, uh, this huge news story. Uh, we were all arrested. Amy was taken into custody actually at that time and, and anticipating charges. Um, and the Abbotsford police started this huge investigation. Uh, now, going back in time a little bit, part of that investigation included uh, reports of hidden cameras found at Excelsior a month before any of this happened. Um, so the owners of the farm, the Binnendike family, they um, found these cameras. They took the SD cards out. They watched them. They called the cops, they handed it over to police, and then somewhere in that whole process, the SD cards disappeared. Um, so this huge piece of key, key, key evidence uh, uh, just went missing somewhere in that just, whole just process. Just went missing. And just we're went, not talking about just one little card. We're talking about a whole bunch of them? Uh, I think, depending there on- There was one card? Yeah, which, 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 which cop or which Binnendike you ask, it could be two, three, four. Um, some number of them, but uh, oh, as of now, the, 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 work. <laughs> yeah, the police have zero in their, in their possession. Um, so that's kind of one, one thing that happened in that process, the investigation. Uh, meanwhile, the SPCA is doing their animal cruelty investigation, sort of, uh, and ultimately uh, in May uh, 2019, they go to the media saying, okay, we need someone to step forward and take uh, responsibility for this footage or we can't do anything about the animal cruelty. 
Um, and July 2019, um, an anonymous person now, now identified as Jeff did step forward to the SPCA uh, with a whole bunch of raw footage and uh, additional footage actually went public um, around that same time. Um, just say, okay, here we go. Here's, here's, here I am. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, you'll protect my confidentiality. And SPCA is yes, of course, uh, if we need to disclose your identity for charges, sure. Or if we get a warrant, sure. And of course, that's perfectly reasonable. So uh, we proceed there. Um, and then they just stopped answering any questions and uh, just calling and emailing and not hearing anything for a month. Uh, somewhere in this time, the SPCA decided that they're not going to proceed with charges. They're going to say that uh, ultimately in, in the media, they're, they're saying, uh, we think the evidence was uh, gathered illegally, so we can't proceed with the charges. Um, no one will answer. Crown won't answer. BCSPCA won't answer the question, did you look at the footage? Like, did how did you make these determinations? Did you make these determinations? But you know, they're they're all basically hiding behind each other. Oh, you have to ask them, you have to ask them. Um, so that decision is made. And at the same time, the BCSPCA decides to phone Abbott for police and say, hey, we got a guy. Uh, and then Jeff gets arrested. <laughs> so Jeff puts his neck out, and we all know Jeff here in AJA. I mean, just one of the most beautiful souls. He's done so much beautiful work for uh, exposing um, animal abuse for many years in this country. Um, I've worked with him as an undercover investigator. And, um, and so he put himself forward, they made a deal with him, and then they just turn around and, and hand him over. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, yeah, that was the, uh, maybe the point where we realized that this is just getting completely out of control, everything about this. Um, so next thing that happens, so Jeff is arrested, um, uh, and we know that Abbotsford Police at this point is continuing their investigation. We, we didn't know exactly what was going on at the time. I think, Amy, there, you had a court appearance for charges, and then they canceled that uh, September 2019, I think, uh, and then nothing happens, and nothing happens, and nothing happens. Somewhere in April 2020, the mayor of Abbotsford goes to the media saying, we need to charge these Excelsior four people, like, or like, we didn't have the, uh, we weren't known as anything at the time, but we need to charge the uh, Meet the Victims activists. Um, and then finally, uh, I think it was August 2020, um, the four of us were charged. Uh, 21 uh, indictable uh, charges for break and enter to commit indictable mischief, and the other charges would be indictable mischief. Wow. Um, so so year 21 and a half, charges between the four of you. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so a year and a half of talking to lots of lawyers to figure out who's going to be our lawyers, how many lawyers are we going to need, uh, how, and just seeing how complicated the case is. Eventually, we, we, um, they all recommended, yeah, we, we, you're going to each need a lawyer if you're going to defend yourselves properly. Uh, all the way until March of this year, finally, when pretrial uh, began. Um, now, what I can see at this point is uh, we went in with the intention of exposing the misconduct by the BCSPCA and the Abbotsford police, some that I touched on. Um, and we were really optimistic while that was happening. Uh, even our lawyers seemed pretty optimistic, which was weird. Uh, and uh, once decisions made, uh, Crown uh, announced that Jeff's charges were stayed or dropped. Um, but they, they can't give an explanation, but I mean, we were going through these things for years, and then after we say, hey, the BCSPCA broke their confidentiality agreement, this is no good. Uh, we argued that, and coincidentally, I guess, Crown dropped the charges, we can put it that way. Uh, as for everything else, we're, well, we're still, we're still, still going to trial with all the rest of the charges, and, uh, and that's And did they are. happen to just shift Jeff's charges over to you too? Like, did, did they just pile? Charges? Well, I, I mean, I guess uh, they, they kind of all overlap, so it didn't really affect, uh, right. like, it just means that Jeff's, uh, Jeff's were done, yeah. Yeah, wow. And and so no clue, no idea, kind of going in, in the dark about what their thinking is, where this is coming from, and all, all of this. Uh, well, I, th I think... Uh, I, I think we have some clues, but uh, yeah, we, we'll you know, it, yeah. you have surmised, but they have given you nothing to work with. Yeah. So yeah. 
Um, Roy, uh, he did a pretty good job of that, Amy. Nick, he like he covered. Anything else you want to add to that timeline? No, I no. think in the rest of the conversation, like other little details will yeah. will mention. But yeah, that was a pretty solid overview. Excellent. That's why Roy's in charge of the overview of the timeline. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, and and do you want to just share about how you got a little bit of a talking to by your lawyers to be careful today? So that was extra <laughs> pressure on Roy. <laughs> yeah, yesterday. I actually got, um, yeah. Yeah, one of the lawyers emailed us and said, oh, we hear that you're going on a live stream interview tomorrow. We need to have an emergency talk. <laughs> and yeah. so, yeah, we had to discuss all the do's and don'ts, of course. And um, I, I don't think Roy mentioned that we're currently under a publication ban. So That's anything the, the that other happened, thing that happened. Yeah, so anything that happened in pretrial or moving forward in trial is technically under a publication ban. So we have to be extremely careful um, about what we say and the details that we mention. So I didn't know that the trial was going to be under a publication ban. I thought that was going to be decided separately. Neither I can kind of explain. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's interesting. And I don't know if it'll be maybe this is the only environment in which most people will be interested in hearing details of how publication bans work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, first of all, that was an inc it's incredibly rare from from all my lawyer nerd friends that there would be a publication ban where the defendants were not requesting a publication ban. So that is just like like whose whose pockets were getting lined there. Um, <laughs> sorry, I, I'm allowed to make all the accusations. <laughs> Um, but no, like it's that that was like a really that that felt um, like it was um, a real punch probably for you folks. And that was yeah. argued in pretrial the first multiple days in pretrial our lawyers argued that we want to be transparent. We want to speak about our case and talk to the media and accept interviews. And that is the point but the judge then turned around and said, well, I see this going a different direction and becoming a political show trial and you putting, you know, the farm on trial and that's not what this is about. So uh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact that it's a little unique, a lot of the animal rights trials that have happened thus far, at least in Canada, have been by judge. Ours is by jury. So there's some differences there about prejudice, prejudicing. I don't know why I always struggle with that word, prejudicing the jury. Um, and yeah, I guess not influencing them either way. So for sure, there is now a publication ban on the trial. It's complicated. Yeah, okay. It all, it all has to do with the rules surrounding jury. Well, I'm not gonna say all, but the main thing is that it has to do with the rules surrounding jury. And uh, yeah, yeah, I think I might just explain that at some point. Yeah, okay. So, so it's more like this is more regular sort of uh, things that you need to keep in mind around the jury. Yeah, like about yeah, media the, to influence jury. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'll I'll leave it because I think it sounds like it's <laughs> it's a little it's not easy for you guys to get into. So, um, okay. Well, that is really disappointing. I'm sorry to hear that, folks. And I hope that your 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 brilliant brains are finding ways around it. So, as I'm I I imagine they are. Um, so, Amy, um, for those of there were quite a few people in the chat that said they are pretty new to this. So can you paint a picture of, you know, through the meet the victims, not only you, but what was it? Uh, well, there were 200 people that uh, participated in the protest, and then there were a bunch of people that were in the barn. So what did you see? Paint us a picture of what you saw in those Excelsior barns. Those grassy fields and blue skies, rainbows. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I mean, that's what the Excelsior sign out front depicts. Um, it's a lady holding a beautiful clean piglet but in a grassy meadow um, and it says Excelsior Hog Farm across it and of course those pigs at Excelsior Hog Farm. Did Nick just leave? Oh I guess Nick might have dropped off by accident. We'll, we'll keep an eye out okay. for him. Yeah. I'll just keep going. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those those pigs, of course, inside Excelsior Hawk Farm will never in their life ever stand on grass or see outside um, unless they're being trucked to slaughter. So they're definitely marketing a different reality for these animals. Um, and yeah, during Meet the Victims, there were 65 of us who attempted to get inside this farm to expose the realities of 
farmed pigs, you know, like the life that they live and the existence that they're forced to endure. Um, and 50 of us successfully got inside. Um, the farmers intercepted us as we were entering. A lot of people got pushed around. Um, and yeah, there was 15 who remained sort of like they were the inside outside team. So they remained on the outside of the barn, but stayed on the property the entire time, which was incredibly courageous of them because they were surrounded by workers and farmers all day mm -hmm. and very secluded. No one from the road could actually see them. Um, and they were able to actually get some really, really powerful footage of um, the outside looking in, mm -hmm. attempting to, and inside dumpsters. So outside of this property, there are dumpsters, tons of dumpsters, just filled with dead animals, um, dead piglets with their skulls smashed in, blood, dead spent mothers who are covered in gashes and wounds. Um, it's a really horrific sight. And mm -hmm. those are the poor souls who end up dying in that place. I mean, most of those animals are trucked off to slaughter and, and they endure another horrific fate, but a lot of animals don't actually even make it out of that farm alive. Mm -hmm. um, because it's just such a brutal, brutal existence for them. So they don't even make and it to the slaughter truck is what you're saying. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's important to note that this farm is considered a local family farm, you know, like that's how they're all depicted. But these barns are cement. They are massive. They're the length of a professional football field. Um, they're huge. There are multiple of these barns and you don't see any animals outside. You don't like, there is no indication that there are animals on the property. Um, but as soon as you open those doors, you are just like struck by the sounds and the smells and the particles in the air that immediately burn your eyes and your throats and stain your nostrils. Um, pretty much every single person who walked in was immediately coughing. Um, it's dark and damp and cold. Um, those animals never see outside. They never experience sunlight. Um, it's disgusting. It's filthy. And there's just crowded pens, just pen after pen, just crowded pens full of hundreds of animals who are suffering. A lot of them had growths and hernias. Some had bloody wounds on them. Um, we saw some animals who had literal like golf ball size wounds like on their face and around their eyes. Um, these animals are suffering. They're not healthy. There, there's no, there's nothing in there that would make life worth living. Um, some pigs couldn't even walk. Many pigs couldn't walk um, and are forced to languish, languish and slowly die on this filthy floor. Um, and hidden camera footage reveals that time lapses of these animals who are just suffering for hours and potentially days. Um, and they eventually die and they're never given medical treatment. They're never helped. Um, they just suffer. Um, mm -hmm. As Roy mentioned, there were definitely dead animals who were existing in pens with other live animals who were eating them. Um, and then of course these farms are breeding facilities. So mm -hmm. go into another section of the farm and there's just row upon row upon row of pregnant pigs who are crammed inside these steel metal cages the size of their own bodies, their gestation crates, and essentially they can't move. Mm -hmm. um, some of the animals couldn't even like turn their heads to look around. They can't take more than one step forward or backwards. Um, they can try and kind of lie down very uncomfortably, but that means that their limbs are sticking out of the cage into someone else's cage next to them. Um, a lot of these animals, I mean, they can only stare at whatever is in front of them. And for some that that's a cement wall, like near centimeters from their nose is a cement wall. And these are incredibly intelligent animals. Um, and they're deprived not only physically, but psychologically. And um, like that makes them go crazy. How could it not? It would make anyone go crazy. We definitely saw pigs who were depicting psychological distress, um, like repetition over and over, like swinging their heads back and forth. And during Meet the Victims, there were certainly some mother pigs who did that for hours and hours. They never stopped. There was no sort of acknowledgement that we were there or um, like they are just completely zoned out and just like doing this repetitive behavior over and over. Um, 
And hidden camera footage also revealed that this farm not only engages, I mean, most of what I just explained, these are the legal standard cruelties within the industry. There's nothing yeah. unusual about this. This is just what happens. This is what is necessary in order to farm pigs in mass. Mm -hmm. But hidden camera footage also revealed this farm engaging in criminal animal cruelty. Um, they were electric prodding pigs in the face. They were hitting them, kicking them, uh, cutting off the tails and ripping out the testicles of screaming distressed piglets with no pain relief. Um, and I think it's important to also acknowledge that this farm is regarded by the industry as one of the best farms in Canada. It's owned and operated by a board member of the BC Pork Producers Association. Yeah. Um, so what was revealed during Meet the Victims and some of the investigative footage, this isn't a bad apple. No. This isn't, you know, a farm that we should all just like rally and oh, they're so awful. This is an awful, awful depict depiction of the industry. No, this is representative of the industry. This is the best of the best. Yeah. And if such immense suffering is the norm on this farm, then we can just imagine what happens inside every other farm. It's true. It's truly horrifying to, to imagine the worst of the worst. Um, you know what, Amy, you did such an amazing job of explaining. But what I really want to do is, is I do want to show folks um, who are willing to watch uh, some of the footage that you got during the Meet the Victims um, action. Um, this is a, a video I've shown before because I think it's it's just so powerful done by Nick Schaefer here. And um, and so it's 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 pretty short, folks. It's just a, uh, four minutes, and so um, I want to share it with you. And if you've seen it before, watch it again because we can never see it too many times. Are you able to see that? Sixty-five animal rights activists run towards a pig farm and illegally enter a barn. The earth hungers for blood. Activists turned up at a hog farm to. Valley. Here's something you don't see often in farm country. Dozens occupied a barn until police intervened. But ultimately, we have to recognize that an individual is losing their lives, an individual that wants to live. And is this something that you accept? Is this is this something you support? gathered at the farm, highlighting the culture clash behind all of this. Is it just about making sure animals are abused as least amount as possible on factory farms? Or is it making sure that we're moving towards getting rid of factory farms? And that's what we really need to happen. Otherwise, we're going to continue to have a conflict of interest in those protecting animals and those abusing animals. When you look at these animals, the darkness just like kills your bones. It's overwhelming. It's overwhelming being here to say the least. 
D.C. Bureau Chief Melanie Nagy was at today's protest, and we warn you, the images are very graphic. This is a revolution. These are the most vulnerable individuals in our society. Are we not strong enough to give compassion? Okay, so um, this is Ray, and he's one of the bar managers. We remain uh, find agreement with respect to bringing media. So why not have everyone leave the barn so that we can do our job as best we can? Okay, but you can still assess the animals which have a small issue because I do not have to do that. Is there some problem if somebody can hang out here? Some people are bringing right in vertical there and we can all get right here. That's a good compromise so, in the first instance. You're all currently being placed under arrest. You're going to provide your identity to us. You will be released from custody. You'll be free to leave. Does everybody understand? Yeah. Is everyone good to do that? Yeah. yeah. All right, here we go. Okay, so what's going to happen is we're, we're uh, taking Amy into custody. I wanted for so long to believe that this wasn't real, and even in there, seeing it, I wanted to believe it wasn't real. The truth of the matter is it's real. That's the truth. Experiencing their pain for, for just five seconds, just empathizing for five seconds hurts so bad. You just imagine their entire life is that. That's their whole life. Oh man. So um it still yeah, it still chokes me up each time I see it. And I think you you see the amount of horror there and you see the courage of activists who are willing to put a lot on the line to expose it. And then we're faced with 21 charges. And so Nick, can you tell us more about the charges? What's the potential sentence? And also what's happened to Excelsior Farms in the meantime? Yeah, so it's no longer 21 offenses, um, obviously because Jeff has been taken right. out of the picture. Sorry. Yes. Um, so we're currently facing a combined 18 indictable offenses uh, for break and enter and mischief, uh, criminal mischief, uh, with each charge holding the potential of up to 10 years in prison. Um, so for me personally and Amy, uh, that would be 70 years behind bars each uh, if we got the max sentence. Um, so it's pretty, it's pretty intense. Um, as for Excelsior, uh, they've still faced zero repercussions uh, at all uh, for their criminal animal cruelty. Um, it's, it's unacceptable, um, but it proves that the industry can abuse animals with impunity, and it's a huge injustice, a huge injustice to the animals who are still suffering there every single day, um, and the animals that are suffering on all farms across BC and the world, pretty much. Um, and honestly, it's frankly, a gross misuse of police resources and public tax dollars. I mean, this trial is huge. It's going on forever. There's been an investigation going on for three years. I mean, that is a huge amount of money and resources being tied up for something that, you know, really shouldn't be prosecuted, in my opinion. Um, yeah, so unfortunately, like, that's, that's the case. The case is that we have been under investigation for three years. We've been going through this for a long time, tying up all kinds of all kinds of resources and the farm has faced zero repercussions. Um, they're able to continue abusing animals if that's what they're doing. I make any assumptions, but we can all make our own assumptions. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate. I think they got a medal. Yeah, literally. They got mm -hmm. a medal? What? <laughs> it's yeah, like some they got a medal. <laughs> thing, yeah. Oh my goodness. And, and is the uh, owner of the farm still on the board, the pork? I believe so. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. It's yeah, definitely been held up as um, 
like they're still so highly regarded. Um, shortly after this Meet the Victims action took place, um, Ray, the guy in the video, he's the farm owner and operator, he was a keynote speaker at this huge agriculture um, conference and he was there to talk about being a victim of animal activists and um, yeah, they're definitely highly supported. Wow. And Sarah, she the victims in this. That's picture. right. Yes, they're right. like they the real that victims that, aren't the victim. They're yeah. they're the victims here. Yeah. They She's thought the your victim. title was uh, you know, was uh, referring to them. <laughs> the title. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness, um, Sarah. Wow, seventy years each for what? Telling the truth. I'm so sorry. Yeah. So, um, Amy, um, what are your lawyers? Um, sort of telling you about the chances of being convicted, about the possibility of getting prison time. Um, and, and, and well, let's start with that. Okay. Um, so on yesterday's emergency lawyer call that we had, they were very uncomfortable to have us talk about what they talk about, <laughs> if that makes sense. They don't want yeah. to attribute anything to them. Got but Understood. they have been very, very clear that, um, from their perspective, it would be a huge injustice for us to face any prison time. Mm -hmm. um, but they also recognize that that's a very real possibility right now for us. Mm -hmm. um, this case is complex. There are a lot of charges. There are a lot of moving parts. We're not just being charged with the Meet the Victims action. We are being charged with several other alleged in instances of break and enter and mischief um, related to that farm and others. Mm -hmm. um, so, that all combined is an extremely massive case. If we were going on trial by judge alone, we would probably 100% be in prison. Um, this is why we also opted for jury. Like we need to appeal to their compassion um, and hopefully that will happen. But yeah, prison time is definitely on the table for sure. Did, and, and, and knowing that, I mean, now, um, did you have any idea going into all of this, just the general exposing of, you know, factory farming of the animal ag industry in Canada? Did you have an idea that you might be facing this kind of consequence? And has it been worth it? <laughs> like, you know, honestly, like this is probably taken up such a big chunk of your time and energy in your life. And this is just the start, right? This could be just the start wants to answer that I'll, I'll say that uh before like before it happened of course you know uh you recognize when you commit civil disobedience uh, so there's anything can happen right at the same time the idea of arrest we're like eh, I don't know, and charges mm. so it was pretty wow you know they're charging four of us. Interesting. <laughs> like, I was, yeah, didn't uh, see that coming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, it's, uh, it, it was a little bit of a surprise that that happened. Um, but, uh, you know, just, just seeing what has happened as a result of, of the charges, I'd say, yeah, that, that's, uh, this has already worked out quite well. Uh, once, once everything that happened in pretrial goes public, even it's like, okay, this is, uh, uh, something that's definitely, um, uh, you know, opening opening a lot of eyes uh, around BC, around the world, hopefully, um, about what happens in animal agriculture. So uh, in that sense, yeah. Uh, but yeah, huge ordeal. It's a huge ordeal. Well, this has hands down for me been the most impactful thing I've ever been a part of for animals. Um, we're three years in and still this is consistently in the media. Um, on our website, if you like click on our media page, the amount of coverage that this case has received has been massive, not only national, but international. And people are interested. People are interested in the fact that there are these activists who went in and got arrested and are facing extreme, you know, uh, repercussions for that. And that makes a lot of people stop and listen. Um, and as much as it's stressful, as much as it's cost a lot of money, and it's been a very excruciating process for us, it's still nothing compared to what those animals endure. Even if we are convicted of prison sentences, it's still nothing compared to what those animals um, experience. And this is, for me, it feels like the bare minimum that I can do for them. Um, I wish that we could have done more. But I mean, sort of 
letting all of those cages open and opening all the doors. I mean, I don't know what else we could have done, but yeah, I don't regret it. Yeah, I, I figured I knew the answer to that already, but... <laughs> Um, you know, speaking of money, um, I, I, a couple of people have brought this up in the chat, so I want to make sure we cover it right now, because right now we've got about 80 people here on Zoom with us, and we've got a bunch more watching on the live stream, and, you know, uh, before people sort of, you know, kind of wander off. I want to make sure that we're really clear that you have not raised all the money you need to for this court case by any means at all. Um, and so um, we've got a link but uh, that we're going to share. But Nick, um, can you can you share a little bit about We've got a really active uh, uh, community here. Folks, you know, are, are so thankful to you folks for doing some of the work that a lot of folks can't do. Um, and so how can we support as, as a community? Yeah, um, like you said, we definitely have not raised even close to <laughs> what this was costing. Um, and that's just in lawyer's fees. That's not, you know, travel accommodations, you know, other things that we have to endure in order to get through trial. Um, I think I just froze. Did I freeze? No, nope, no, nope, you're still here. Oh, he can't hear oh. us. Can, can you hear us, Nick? He froze. Oh, he did freeze. Me. Okay. I'm coming back. I'm back. Oh, there you are. Oh, you're back. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Hooray. Um, of course, like I wasn't frozen the whole time until I started to talk. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, for supporters and people looking to support, um, I'd say if you're in BC or the lower mainland area, um, the most impactful way that you can support is by showing up to court in person. Um, a lot of people don't know the fact that you are able to show up. Uh, we're going to be able to have people in the courtroom. Um, so if you can show up in person, I think I'm frozen yeah. again. No, we, we got you, Nick. <laughs> We've got you still, <laughs> Nick. Perfect. Oh, you still got me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I think when you think you're frozen, you're not. So just, okay. you know, just keep going and we'll yell gotcha. at you if you get frozen. Okay. Perfect. So, I'll probably so not yeah, it. you were saying <laughs> folks can attend. And you know what? Somebody yeah. the other day was just complaining to me in AJA, like, oh, everything happens in Toronto and I'm in BC. And I'm like, are you kidding? Have you been following Excel Seer 4? Like, that's one of the most exciting things right now. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, like, trial I wish I was itself there. is going to be very exciting. There's a lot going on. Um, and yeah, it's going to be very exciting. So if you can show up in person, that would be absolutely amazing. Um, it's a four week trial. Uh, we're there Monday to Friday, uh, every day. So, uh, you guys are, you guys are welcome to come, come and watch and show your support in person. And the lawyers did state to us that one of the best ways that we can influence the jury is to show them consistently. So every day, um, how much public support is actually behind us. Um, there's going to be rallies outside of the courthouse on the first day of trial, so June 27th at 8.30 a.m. If you're able to show up in Abbotsford there, that would be fantastic. We would all really appreciate that. Um, and anyone's able to come down and join. Um, Nick, if you're um, not... Jennifer, Jennifer's asking, can they actually get into the courtroom? Yes, yeah. yeah. So you will be allowed in the courtroom. Um, if you could all wear either a Meet the Victim shirt or an Excelsior 4 shirt, that would be fantastic. Um, they may or may not make you turn it inside out when you go into the courtroom, but uh, at least we'll all still be in black in the same color, which would be really cool. A nice uh, visual spectacle for the jury. Um, yeah, so if you're not able to join in person, if you're not in BC or the lower mainland, um, you can always check out our website as well. Uh, we have all of our video footage on there. We have the full backstory and all of the update information uh, on the case. So, you know, check that out, excelsior4.org, uh, it would be great. Uh, we also have a few calls to action there, including a pre-written email to send to the Ministry of Agriculture, um, urging them to implement CCTV cameras, mandatory CCTV cameras um, in all animal farms and slaughterhouses across British Columbia. Um, so that would be really great to get your support in as well. Um, there's also one to change the animal law enforcement from the BCSPCA to more accountable and transparent government agency, which would also be really awesome. Um, and there's also a petition on our website. You can sign the calls for Excelsior Hog Farm to be prosecuted for its well-documented criminal animal cruelty, something that's yet to happen. And we would really all, of course, like to see happen. Um, and then, of course, uh, as Kimberly mentioned, we've got our GoFundMe uh, link on there as well. Um, so you guys can help support to the hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal fees that we have. Mm -hmm. um, it's quite a bit. Um, yeah, and if you're not able to, yeah, literally, uh, when we first started, their, their um, modest estimate was $300,000 in legal fees. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a lot. And uh, they are, you know, giving us 
deals they're, they're not charging at their full lawyers rate like i don't want you to think that you know the lawyers are just raking us over the coals here and trying to benefit off animal rights activists they are doing us pretty solid favors here um but it is it's a long trial it's been going on for years and it's a lot of work so you know anything would be really 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 appreciated um and if you're not in the if you're not in the position to donate financially, if you could share the GoFundMe link or the website link or something with, you know, other people, friends, family, you know, if you know any philanthropists, that'd be cool, uh, um, that are able and in a better position to donate um, financially, that would also be really, really appreciated as well. Um, we also have a link on there that you can purchase our Excelsior 4 shirts as well with all the proceeds going to us and our legal fees. So in a nutshell, that's kind of how everyone can help support us and, you know, anything, anything, even sharing the website is incredibly, incredibly appreciated. Mm. Uh, okay, a couple of real quick questions that folks have asked. Um, Debbie says, uh, can a neo-Luddite uh, activist donate via check? <laughs> is there a way to do it <laughs> via check uh, on the um, address yeah, I mean, on the website? You know we what? don't have I'll, an address, I'll, but yeah. I'll if, connect you, Debbie. I'll, I'll yeah, connect you to these guys. Go. Exactly. Um, uh, also, someone is asking for tax purposes, can I uh, contribute directly to the lawyers? That is that oh. possible? Yeah, so um, if you reach out to one of us or Kimberly, uh, we can put you in contact with our lawyers and um, you could e-transfer them directly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, that's cool. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and let me see. Carrie E said, I will be there. Car full car too. Uh, Barry said, I Yay. sent an email to the Guardian recommending that they cover Excelsius 4 story. Um, and Debbie, uh, in response to the t-shirts being having to go inside out, she says, you can't uh, wipe and meet the victim's tattoo off your forehead. I was committed. joking a little while ago uh, because <laughs> they made everybody do that at pretrial. So I was joking, saying it's too bad we didn't know that ahead of time. We could have printed all the graphics on the inside of the t-shirts as well. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Yes, right. Um, okay, so um, some more questions here. Um, uh, I, I would like to know know, you know, the pretrial was a huge adventure in itself. Um, you know, we already talked about the media band, uh, ban. And I, so I know you guys had to have had to tiptoe around it. But I remember reading some of your um, online sort of um, reflections on it. And there were still some really neat things that you could talk about some, some kind of surprises and experiences and lessons learned. Um, well, Roy, do you want to start like what, what sort of things yeah. came up? Publication ban again, yeah. Well, that was the first first surprise, obviously, that we touched on a lot. Uh, it's all made up. It's, there's no rules, no explain. No, it's uh, it, it was weird because at first it was okay. We don't want the jury doing this, so let's let's have a publication publication ban. Says the judge, and then oh, you know what? I think it's automatic. And I've been I've been personally like looking through the criminal code to figure this whole thing out, and it's extremely unclear when it's supposed to apply. Actually, it's kind of clear when it's supposed to apply, and I think it shouldn't um right now but uh uh so we, we're kind of sorting out based on what the judge is saying um uh how it's supposed to be but we're it's it's hard to get real clarity on a lot of this so that's one one thing um we should at least be, we'll be able to talk about things that happen during trial in front of the jury that's like 99.999 percent sure once that happens uh, and once at the end of trial, uh, or definitely after trial, then everything should become public record. So that's that's great. Uh, but between there, uh, there's a lot of things, and case by case, we have to look at can we say this, and then carefully look at what's been public already, and and uh, how the rules work. And it's it's really tricky. Um, for things that uh, surprised me no one is allowed to have coffee in those courtrooms. I thought they would just be drinking coffee like nonstop. So, you know, there you go. Uh, apparently in Abbotsford, you're not allowed, yeah, in Abbotsford, there's a sign in front of the courtroom doors. I decided to take a look. Uh, first off, if you go there, you're going to have to go through a metal detector and which is different from New West. And, uh, uh, and you won't have, you won't have coffee. And I guess you won't have your, your personal water bottle either. Maybe um, we'll see if they actually enforce that. Um, and because of that, if you happen to be need caffeine, then you want to learn to drink coffee at the right time so that you're drink caffeinated, then emptied before you go in um, for, because you know, the break should come within like an hour and a half, but you just never know, I guess. Uh, 
for me, I took notes, but I would have taken better notes and I would have written down the times of everything that happens because it helps find things in transcripts. So if you're ever in trial, uh, even during pretrial, be prepared because uh, pretrial itself, uh, another surprise, we learned it can be dramatic and exciting. Um, but for us, everybody involved other than us has done something awful or improper or unethical. Everybody, and they all have to take the stand to determine what evidence is admissible. So it was very exciting just seeing that kind of thing happen. Um, so those are the, the takeaways I got kind of that I can talk about from pretrial. Mm -hmm. What about, um, Nick, I remember you had a post about talking about like some of the conversations in the breaks and everything like that, um, that you were surprised by the, 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 the supporters that came, came forward. Are you allowed to talk about that? Um, do you mean the supporters as in the people I was not expecting to support us? Exactly. <laughs> I, I don't know, guys, am I allowed to talk about that, you think? Be careful. <laughs> um, it's, it's okay. It, you know yeah. what? We, we can leave it at the fact that there were some very surprising people that you thought were mm -hmm. on the other the team. other side yeah, yeah some, that, some which, surprising that's, people that were on both uh, one of the other teams i guess yeah. which may or may not be genuine may or may not be genuine but i do feel like at least one of them was really genuine yeah. um yeah i can't i i, I no, don't no, want i do want to talk about it i can't wait until trial's over but if you this... go to my instagram and scroll back to the where i'm <laughs> the, the section where i'm wearing court clothes for a whole bunch of times you yeah. do those posts and you'll find out what i'm talking about <laughs> Oh man. Um, okay. So I, I really want to find out a little bit more, um, Amy. I mean, I know you folks, you are determined to, you know, through this to put animal agriculture on trial. What's your strategy for doing that? How's it been working so far? Again, what, whatever you can tell me, you don't, you don't, don't tell me anything you can't, you shouldn't. Okay, I'm going to try and keep this short and sweet because um, mm -hmm. I can't, I'm not allowed to say too much. Okay. Um, but let's just say, unfortunately, Excelsior Hawk Farm is not the one on trial. Um, they have not been charged for or prosecuted for their well-documented criminal abuse of animals. Um, instead, we are facing those serious charges for revealing that abuse. Um, however, our entire case relates to Excelsior Hog Farm's treatment of animals. The entirety of our case is surrounded about, around that. So of course, the farm and the pigs and the welfare of those animals and the treatment, whether it's legal or illegal, all of that is at the center of our case and why we did what we did, what we revealed, everything surrounds those pigs. So we will, of course, continue to defend ourselves and our actions in trial, but more importantly, we will use this as an opportunity to tell the stories of the millions of animals, the millions of farmed animals who suffer in Excelsior and places just like Excelsior. Um, as I said, like Excelsior is representative of the industry. So while we speak about Excelsior, we are speaking about all farms. Um, and we will, we will also use this as an opportunity to continue to expose the complicity of our justice and enforcement sy systems, including the Abbotsford Police, including the BCSPCA, um, and the various ways that they have applied the law in favor of animal agriculture and with bias against animal activists. That's one thing that did come, well, sort of came as a surprise to me during pretrial is that, as Roy said, every single person besides us who went on the stand every single enforcement body, um, they bend and broke their own rules in order to criminalize us and conceal animal suffering. Every single person um, engaged in misconduct in order to criminalize animal activists and to completely sweep under the rug all of the animal suffering. Um, but it is our goal to undo that. Wow. And that wow. And, and watching that and seeing the results of what happened, it kind of just seems like, uh, oh, well, rules were broken. They were bent. Whatever. Yeah, you you know, you have right. to bend the rules when you're dealing with evil, like animal advocates. I mean, <laughs> like that's, you know, they're, they're, 
you just have to because they're we are the, some the, of the worst, worst the worst of the worst in the on the planet so oh my god it's yeah um and so, i think it's probably important to note that this isn't unusual mm -hmm. um i <laughs> mean our enforcement agencies this is very like normal behavior mm -hmm. um they will try and criminalize activists they will try and help um prop up corporations and industries um and yeah support them so this is very normal behavior it's just really disgusting gross behavior asia alex said it feels like we're living in the upside down yeah it does um okay so speaking of the bcspca and um the abbotsford police roy there has been a lot of funny business with law authorities around this case um, you know, Amy hinted to it, but you have a whole video out talking about this. Um, can you just give us a little rundown of, of some of the stuff that's happened? Yeah. yeah, one thing good Amy pointed out is that this does happen a lot. And I think Jenny's here. I, I know for a few of the poor Greg um, people are here. They know, I don't know if Malcolm's here, but Malcolm Klimowitz will know how law enforcement and industry and, you know, how they act you know they they're going they're protecting industry and they're going after activists they don't care about animals um and yeah we saw that like we mentioned the bcspca clearly did something horribly wrong um and apparently as a result uh there were charges uh, that just went away uh and abbots for police of course the other party um uh we showed committed misconduct um like that missing evidence like the missing sd cards like what what's going on there um really just seems like both of them, Abbotsford Police and BCSPC, are really eager to see activists go to jail. And um, and yeah, like uh, they have their procedures. You know, they they have um, they have chain of custody procedures. They have to take notes of things, right? Uh, they have to correctly apply for warrants and correctly execute warrants. And there's limits placed on that kind of thing, right? Uh, they have these rules they have all sorts of rules that they're supposed to be following um in order to have a, a fair investigation objective investigation and i can't honestly say that uh they seem to care about that thing mm -hmm. and uh, you know after trial we'll be able to like give all the dirty details of, of this but, yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, but maybe during trial we can but we'll see well, and there's also a video out there, folks. Um, the Unicorn Riot um, published a story um, about the Excelsior 4 on Friday, I believe it was, and we have it on on our in our Facebook group. But um, I think Kirsten is also going to post it um, if you want to check out the video that was made about specifically about the Abbotsford Police and uh, the BCSPCA. So yeah, Kirsten put that in. Um, okay, a couple of other questions that have come in, folks. Um, one is from John. He asked, um, the pretrial was in uh, was at, in a court in New Min Westminster. Why are they moving to court in Abbotsford now? Well, I or mean, technically, it was supposed to be in Abbotsford in the, for in the first place, um, okay. but at the last minute it got moved, which was super fun because we had to change all of our accommodations as well and figure that all out. Um, but yeah. Amy, go ahead with court. Um, yeah, basically, now that we are we are in the Supreme Court, so the BC Supreme Court, um, so technically our pretrial hearings could be at any BC Supreme Court house, um, and the judge lives in New Westminster, so he didn't want to commute every day. It was more convenient for him for our pretrial proceedings to be in his hometown. Um, so that's why we did that. But when it comes to the jury trial itself, it has to be in Abbotsford. Abbotsford is where the crime was committed. So, um, yeah, we have to go back to home base for that. Okay. Okay. Which got also it. means the uh, jury of our peers will be coming from Abbotsford and Abbotsford area. So oh, that'll dear. be, which is a huge farming community. Yeah. For those of you, yeah, not from BC. Sorry. Uh -huh, <laughs> yeah. The, uh -huh. It is built on farming Abbotsford and Chilliwack. So. Yeah, I don't know how much of our peers it is, but yeah, hey, we'll oh, that's see. tough. That's really tough. Yikes. Um, okay, Liam is asking, are you concerned that the judge will not allow you to speak about your motivations or what you saw in there? Um, We're concerned that uh, some of like some of our uh, strongest defenses uh will be um 
cut off at the knees or not allowed. Uh, we are we are concerned. Yes. Yeah, um, Amy, Roy, are we allowed to let them know who the judge is? I mean, a lot of people here would probably know who the judge is. Justice um, Fritz Verhoeven. So he's the one that granted the indictment at Ferry Creek. Um, injunction. Injunction at Ferry Creek. Um, yeah, sorry, indictment. That's us. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, so he's sort of very well known for being uh -huh. anti-activist, anti-civil uh -huh. disobedience. Um, uh -huh. And pretrial was, I mean, that was evident. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's evident that there's a clear bias against activists of all kinds, so. Yeah, that is very, very unfortunate. Man, guys, you got you got it stacked against you pretty hard. So, um, you know, we are uh, folks, we need to put as much um, power behind them, as much support as we can in whatever way possible. Um, uh, Cheryl was asking, when you say travel and accommodation expenses, what are those? And can you provide us or Kimberly with those approximate amounts? Um, folks, you know, if you want, um, Cheryl is a very generous, uh, generous person, and I would love to connect to you folks, okay? Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that afterwards. Um, so, thank you so much. Yeah. We, yeah. yeah all this part, we really, really appreciate it. Been, well, yeah, it's been stressful. <laughs> it's, I'm thank sure so it's much. been incredibly, I'm sure it's been so hard on all of you. Um, and you know, I just, before we, uh, before we wrap up, um, Kirsten, can you take us off of spotlight? I'm just going to read you some of the comments that you might have missed. Um, uh, Yasmin said, seeing a small group of people being so courageous also inspires courage in others. Um, Debbie said, I'm so proud to be on the same side of history as these beautiful people. Um, there is just so much love. People are saying, if you're the worst, you are the best of the worst of all time. Um, if you, if our speakers would go ba back onto gallery view, you'll see everybody there in the audience. Um, like I said, you had about 80 folks here in Zoom uh, waited on uh, everything with bated breath. Um, and uh, we're here and we're going to donate. We're going to help with the uh, emails. We're going to, you know, stay, keep our sites on this trial really closely and try to amplify. Oh, one thing Christine asked was, um, uh, it, it's a publication ban also on the people that attend the trial, right? like everybody that's in the courtroom it's a publication ban for so i know she, she's trying to get a little tricky but, but, <laughs> but oh but, yeah, if you're right, in, yeah. Pre, in pre trial uh yeah um you could you could be potentially charged for disclosing things there if you're yeah. really not careful but during trial during uh -huh. trial so long as the jury's there watching then uh you can write all that down and tell anybody you want oh really during the trial during the trial as long as the jury's there um, to hear oh. or see whatever is happening, then yeah, that can be reported on right away. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. That's really great to know. Um, finally, Denise said, you all make me proud of being on the right side of history. Thank you for everything. So Animal Justice Academy folks, can we give a great big thank you to Roy and Amy and Nick and, and sending all of our love and all of our strength behind you folks. Um, I know you're going to do the most amazing work for the animals and, uh, and you already have. So whatever on, on top of it is icing, really. So thank you, folks. Um, you've got all the information. Uh, our next lunchtime live is on Thursday, uh, June 20th, uh, bringing animal advocacy into schools. That's not right. June 30th, sorry. Bringing animal advocacy into schools with Mike Farley. If you're not already on our email list, uh, if you're already on our email list, you'll get those notifications or you can sign up for free at animaljusticeacademy.com. All right, folks, thank you for coming and being with us here live. Again, to the Excelsior Four, thank you so much. And um, all power to you folks. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much.